Hello, everybody. Welcome to my Intermediate Accounting 17th edition uh, video solution walkthrough. This is for uh, problem or exercise problem. This is for problem 16.1. Uh, this is from the Intermediate Accounting 17th edition textbook. Authors are Don Kiso, Jerry Weingant, and Terry Warfield. The question you use in the presentation is copyright 2019 by John Wiley and Sons. All rights are reserved. This is for educational purposes only. The video may not be distributed or redistributed without the express permission of Wiley. This solution presentation is copyright 2019 to 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. The opinions contained within this presentation are those of Bennett Tchaikovsky and not the authors of the textbook or of Wiley. Okay, so let's take a look here and I'm just gonna go ahead and change this. So it is just problem 16.1. Okay. So we have over here um, entries for various dilutive securities. The shareholders' equity set selection, excuse me, the yeah, stockholders' equity section of Martino Inc. at the beginning of the current year appears below. So let's just go ahead and kind of like we'll make a chart because one of the things this question is asking us to do is to prepare a shareholders' equity section at the very end. So let's go ahead and kind of do this as kind of like a little bit of a roll forward. So um, if we go to sec.gov, and if I just go to, let's just go Apple. And when we look at a statement of shareholders equity, <clears throat> and let's go to financial statements and supplementary data. Okay, shareholders equity. Okay, so when you kind of go through and see this, you'll see different types of, um, Basically, you'll see uh, different ways of kind of going through and, and doing this. Um, just this is one method of kind of going through and looking at shareholders equity. You can also see, and again, it's kind of to, to essentially show that, you know, the ending balances in our financial statements, where are those coming from? So you see over here, like a reconciliation of uh, retained earnings. Uh, you've got your beginning, your net income, your dividends and dividends declared, uh, common stock uh, withheld, uh, common stock repurchased. Uh, although I think that that should be recorded as treasury stock. We'll have to look into that a little bit later. Um, so that's kind of where um, this is one example. Let's take a look at another one. It's always fun to go through and figure out what you don't know. Okay, so let's see. Okay, perfect. So this is what I was kind of more looking for. So over here, you've got consolidated statements of redeemable, non-controlling interest in equity or statement of shareholders equity. So what you're doing is you're essentially showing here's the beginning equity balance. And then here are like the different transactions that happened. Did you go through and issue stock? Uh, these were like notes that were converted. Uh, this was common stock that was issued for equity. So these are the kinds of things. This is kind of something that we're not going to prepare exactly something like this, but it's this type of reconciliation so that we can kind of help the investor better see what has happened with uh, equity during the, during the time period. So let's go ahead and make this up. So we'll have um, common stock uh, par or it's actually, let's say this, um, authorized uh, shares of common stock. We don't have any preferred, which is great. So beginning. So our authorized shares are a million. Uh, issued shares are 300,000. Outstanding shares are also 300,000. Okay, and then we're gonna have a uh, common stock at par, which is essentially going to be the number of issued times 10 or 3 million. So this is, Okay, so then over here, we're gonna have additional paid in capital, common stock, and over here at 600,000, 
And then lastly, we're going to have retained earnings uh, beginning is 570,000. Okay. So this is the kind of the chart that we're going to kind of go through and kind of add to as we go through and do each of these transactions. So during the current year, the following transactions occurred. The company issued to the stockholders 100,000 rights. 10 rights are needed to buy one share of stock at 32. The rights were void after 30 days. The market price of the stock at this time was $34 per share. You've probably heard me before of saying that if you're giving something below the fair value, it's always problematic. I've never seen a transaction like this in my professional career. And I'm not saying that maybe I should have seen this, but um, when it comes to number one, we're not going to do anything. Rather, there would be a memorandum that would be issued. Um, and this is the solution that Wiley gives. I don't disagree with it. Uh, you basically would say that if this was happening, if they were void after 30 days, the one issue you'd have is you want to make some kind of a disclosure about it in the equity notes to the financials, um, probably would become a little bit more relevant if it was issued at the very end of the, of the year. But as you can kind of see over here for number three, all but 5,000 of the rights were exercised in 30 days. So we're going to go ahead and actually skip to number three. So if all but 5,000 of the rights, so we have 100,000 rights. And 10 rights, basically rights to buy one share. So we have a total of 10,000 shares that could be issued as a result of the rights. Okay. So when, what the next thing we're going to go through and do is we're then going to say over here for number three is like, okay, all but 5,000 of the rights were exercised. So if all but 5,000 This means that 95,000 or of the 100,000 rights exercised or 95%. So the way this is gonna work is that, well, if 10,000 shares that could have been issued and 95% of the rights were uh, exercised because right over here, all but 5,000 were exercised in 30 days, what I would do here is I'm going to have a total of, okay, so basically this is 9,500 shares issued under the rights. So what does that mean? The amount of cash that I'm going to receive on 12 or let's say they don't even give us a time period. So during the year, like we'll just call it uh, 6 one x one just making up a date. Uh, we're going to be getting cash and the cash amount is going to be 9,500 times uh, 32 because the option to buy is at $32 per share. Lane from Tchaikovsky Bennett, Mac Mini. Okay. And what I'm going to be doing over here is I'm going to be crediting common stock at par. When I credit common stock at par, this is going to be 9,500 shares being issued times $10 per share or 95,000. And what we're gonna do over here is we're just gonna go ahead and put the rest to additional paid in capital, common stock. Okay. And this would be to record shares issued as a result of the rights or the stock or the rights. Okay, so that's what we would go through and do over here. So in terms of how this impacts our shareholders equity. So one, this is gonna be no entry. Two, we're gonna deal with that momentarily, but for three, for the stock rights. So my authorized shares are not changing. My issued shares, and as I'm realizing, I'll kind of go a little bit out of order, but we're gonna to get to the same result. Uh, my issued shares are increasing by 9,500. 
So my outstanding shares are also going to be increasing by 9,500. My common stock at par is going to be increasing by 95,000. And my additional paid in capital common stock is going to increase by 209,000. There's no impact on retained earnings. So that's how we kind of go through and look at this one. Okay. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay. All right. So that was number three. Let's go back and take a look at number two. The company sold to the public 200,000 10% bond issue at 104. The company also issued with each bond $100,000. Excuse me. The company also issued with each $100 bond one detachable stock purchase warrant, which provided for the purchase of common stock at $30 per share. Shortly after the issuance, similar bonds without warrants were selling at 96 and the warrants were selling at eight. So what I need to do is that I'm getting cash of 200,000 and the total amount of money I'm gonna be getting is 208,000. So, Actually, this is not right. Hold on. There we go. So the question I have is, because we have a detachable stock warrant, what I need to make sure is, do I need to go through and do an allocation? So do we need to do an allocation? Let's check this out. So if I have a bond payable, it tells us that the bond payable, so similar bonds without warrants were selling at 96. So the bond payable, is gonna be selling at 200,000 at 96%. And that's how we're gonna get the value of that bond payable. Now for the bonds, it tells us that with each $100 bond, one detachable stock purchase warrant. So if our bonds, we're 200,000, each bond has a $100 value. That must mean that a total of 2,000 bonds were being issued. And we're giving the investors for each bond that they're going through and issuing, they're getting one detachable stock purchase warrant. So over here, we're giving out 2,000 warrants. It tells us that the value of these warrants is $8 per share. So what I'm gonna do over here, is I'm gonna say, okay, we've got 2,000 times eight or 16,000, okay? So our total value is gonna magically be 208,000. Now, if, you, if this was not the case, you would need to go back and essentially allocate this out. So if the value was 200,000, if the value was something different, then I would have to go through and then allocate accordingly. But in this case right over here, I don't really have to go through and, and do that. So for number two, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and let's go ahead and record the transaction. So we'll call this, I don't know, we'll do 71X1 or maybe 51X1. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna record it at the value of these items. So the amount of cash we are gonna be receiving is the 208,000, where well, the bond was selling at 104, which means I've multiplied it for the result by 1.04. Over here, I'm also going to be debiting a discount on bonds payable. Why am I de debiting discount on bonds payable? Well, the bond has a face value of 200,000, and if it's selling at 96%, it means it was selling at a discount. My discount is gonna be 8,000 and I'm gonna be crediting bonds payable for 200,000. I always credit bonds payable at the face amount. Okay, so we've got that part over here done. Of course though, our debits do not equal our credits, which is a problem. So I need 16,000 to balance. And that balance amount is gonna be additional paid in capital, stock warrants. Okay, so just to record, bond issuance.
Now, when it comes to our chart, we're not going to really do anything. When it comes to our chart, there's really not, no shares being issued. But what I am going to do is I'm going to add a column in over here for APIC uh, warrants. And I'm going to be showing that over here as a credit for 16,000. Remember, bonds payable is a liability. The cash is showing up on the balance sheet. So that's kind of what's happening over here. So there's no impact on retained earnings. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to number four. At the end of the year, uh, we dealt with number three. That was the stock appreciation rights. At number four, at the end of the year, 80% of the warrants in two had been exercised and the remaining were outstanding and in good standing. Okay, so if 80% of the warrants have been exercised, so the warrants issued were 2,000. Okay, so if 80% of these have been exercised, that means I'm gonna have 1,600 shares issued. Remember that it's a one for one so essentially that each with one detachable stock purchase warrant, which provided for the purchase of one share of common stock at $30 per share. So what I'm going to do over here is I'll just call this 71X1. How much cash am I going to be getting? Well, the amount of cash I'm going to be receiving is going to be 1,600 shares times the option price per the, the price for the strike price for the warrant which is going to be at, uh, which provided for the purchase of common stock at $30 per share. So it's gonna be 1600 times 30. What I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, that's my cash. And what am I issuing? I'm gonna issue over here, common stock at par. This is gonna be 1600 times 10. Now, what I also have to be mindful of as well is with this additional paid in capital stock warrants, this is really no longer, part of this is no longer outstanding. So I'm gonna take 16,000 times 0.8 because 80% of these are being exercised. So this is gonna be 16,000 times 0.8, right? Because again, right over here, I need the, basically of this amount, because these are being exercised, I'm just going to go ahead and reduce the additional paid in capital stock warrants because I'm actually now going through and actually issuing the shares. So over here, make this bigger for everybody. So my balancing amount is going to be to additional paid in capital common stock. And this is going to be my uh, basically my plug or whatever I need to do to make this balance. Okay. So, so this is going to be to record, um, what would I say? Oh, what's a good way to say record exercise of stock warrants. So let's go ahead and put this up on our chart. So number four. Okay, so when the warrants were exercised, this caused another 1,600 shares to be issued and outstanding. My common stock at par is going to increase by 16,000. Okay. And then over here, my additional paid in capital common stock is also increasing by 44,800. But what you're going to notice over here is for the additional paid in capital on the warrants, this is going to be decreasing because I'm debiting this balance because now some of these warrants have gone through and have been exercised. So that's what we're doing, dealing with with number four. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next one. So our next one right over here is that during the company, during the current year, the company granted stock options for 10,000 shares of common stock to company executives. The company using a fair value option pricing model determines that each option is worth $10. The option price is 30. The options were to expire at year end and were considered compensation for the current year. So right over here, you would have uh, stock 
we'll call this 81x1. We're going to have stock compensation expense. And then we're going to have additional paid in capital stock options. So we're going to create a new one for this. The amount that I record as compensation is going to be 10,000. And then using the fair value option pricing model determines that each option is worth 10. So right over here, this is going to be 10,000 times 10. And make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So this is going to be at 100,000. So when I go through and do this one in particular, so this is to record issuance of stock options. So over here, now this is kind of an interesting thing. The question is actually telling us what the ending retained earnings is. So if you got a question where you actually had to adjust retained earnings going through, you would actually be reducing it for the 100,000, but because it's telling us down here is that the ending retain earnings is 750. So they're gonna be making those adjustments for us. The book is really wanting us to kind of go through or the, this question really wants us to go through and to kind of figure out, well, what's happening to the accounts? So we have stock options. And so for my stock options, I'm gonna create a new additional paid in capital category, stock options. And this is going to be a hundred thousand. Okay. So at this point in time, no shares have actually been issued under those stock options. So that's why we're kind of going through and uh, handling it that way. Now here's some fun stuff. Okay. All but 1000 of the shares related to the stock options were exercised by year end. The expiration resulted because one of the executives failed to fulfill an obligation related to the employment contract. Okay. What I like to do in this one is I want to take this in two parts. So the first part that I want to do is I want to get rid of those ex executive stock options. So a thousand have been terminated. When we're doing it mid-year, we're going to go and go ahead and make that adjustment to credit stock compensation expense. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reverse out the expired or the, the forfeited stock options. And so if we're reversing this out and if it's in the service period, we're gonna go ahead and credit stock compensation expense. And we'll debit additional paid in capital stock options. Okay. And again, so 10% or, you know, a thousand of the 10,000 expired. So this is going to be the amount that we're going to go ahead and remove. Okay. So this will be to record forfeiture. So we're going to go ahead and then just, this is going to record the forfeiture of stock options. Okay, so right over here, so we've got that one right over here and then, but all but a thousand shares were exercised. Okay, so we've dealt with this first part. So let's go ahead and put this up here. So I'm going to be decreasing. We'll call it six one, the letter A. I uh, will call this a um, termination of stock options. And we'll show this as a negative 10,000. Right? Remember when we're dealing with owner's equity accounts, these will typically have credit balances so that when we're debiting it, it's gonna show up as a negative right over here. And now we're gonna do 6B and this is gonna be the exercise of the stock options. So when it comes to the exercise of the stock options, right over here, um, the option price is 30. So that basically means that 9,000 shares were exercised at $30 per share. So now we're going to do 91X1 part two. So this is going to be cash. So we're going to be receiving 9,000 bucks at uh, $30 per share.
What I'm also going to do is I'm going to get rid of the additional paid in capital stock options that relates to these. And just remember, because we just did the termination of those stock options, the amount that we're going to be writing off. So we started over here with 100,000. We just got rid of 10. So the remaining balance on these stock options is going to be 90,000. So we've got additional paid in capital, 90,000 uh, debit. Okay. And then over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna credit common stock at par. So the common stock at par, and we'll just go ahead and highlight this over here. I sound like Bob Ross today. We're doing a little painting here and we see like this little, uh, this little tree and we're gonna, I'm just getting around. So we got 9,000 options or 9,000 shares times $10 per share which is the par value or 90,000 bucks. And then what we'll be doing over here is we're gonna credit additional paid in capital stock options or excuse me, additional paid in capital common stock. And this is gonna be for the difference. Of 270. Now, just know that this is a coincidence because usually when you have a par value, you would never use it $10 a share. This just happened to be how they were saying what the fair value was. The fair value, they said the fair value and the par value were the same, which is absolutely insane. So, but that's, it is what it is. This is why, like I said, to record the exercise of stock options. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that information over in here. So when the exercise of the stock options happened, we issued 9,000 shares. So, and we have another 9,000 outstanding shares. The common stock at par is gonna be 90,000. Additional paid in capital common stock is gonna be over here at 270. Okay, and then over here, we debited additional paid in capital common stock for the stock options at 90,000. So, as we kind of go through and look at this over here, let's go ahead and summarize. So a couple of things is that this is gonna tell us, the problem told us that the ending retain earnings was 750. So that was given to us. We don't have to do anything with the stock option expense or those kinds of things. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave that out. And okay. So stock options, additional paid in capital, this is going to be zero. Additional paid in capital warrants, this is going to be 3,200. Where is that coming from? Well, if we look at this over here for the warrants, we issued 16,000 because we issued, this was 2,000 warrants at $8 per warrant for a total of 16,000. 80% of these were exercised. So we should have an ending balance of 3,200, which is what this is. Additional paid in capital common stock, opening balance is 600 plus 209 plus 44.8, and then plus uh, 270,000 common stock at par. This should be right over here, 3,201,000. My outstanding shares are going to be 320, 1,100 and my issued shares are going to be the same. Authorized shares are going to be the same. So as I look at the ending presentation over here for uh, stockholders equity, we're good on this number right over here. We have 320,100 shares issued and outstanding. Common stock at par is 3,201,000. My additional paid in capital common stock is 1,123,800. Additional paid in capital stock warrants is 3,200. And this is over here is at zero. Just note that you would usually show this as a total amount. And then perhaps in the footnotes, you would go through and, and further break that out. So um, that is problem 16-1. Uh, I apologize for the interruptions today, uh, but hopefully the video came uh, through. Uh, this is uh, February 4th, 2022. I want to thank Wiley for allowing me to use uh, their questions. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you'd like to see other solutions, please feel free to ask for them in the comments. Have a great rest of your day. Have a good one.